so that should take care of any questions you guys had about the homework. You did a great job on that. I also had a chance to check your bell ringer spiral review. You guys did a great job reviewing factoring, a great job reviewing completing the square, and putting quadratics in standard form. So for a few weeks, we've been talking about quad solving quadratic equations, and we're going to continue with that today. First, we learned about factoring. Sometimes factoring doesn't work out so nicely, so we learned about completing the square. Sometimes that doesn't work so nicely. Let's take a look. So this doesn't factor. We're going to give a shot to completing the square. What's the first thing we want to do if we're going to complete the square? Uh, get A equal to 1. Good job. So we want to divide everything by 7. It worked here. My A equals 1, I have X squared. Then I have 2 sevenths X, and 11 over 7 is my constant. But before we even move our constant over, let's think for a second. We're going to take half of that. Half of 2 sevenths is 1 seventh. Then if we square it, we get 1 49th. That gets super messy with all those fractions, so we don't want to do that. That's when we turn to the quadratic formula. So everybody pull out your guided notes in Schoology going to look a lot like this. We're going to go over the quadratic formula, we're going to talk about it step by step, and we're going to try it step by step. The quadratic formula can be used for any quadratic equation, even if you can factor it, even if you can complete the square, but it has to be in standard form. Step one is put your equation in standard form. Somebody remind me, um, Eliza, what's the standard form of a quadratic equation? AX squared plus BX plus C. Very good job. That's your quadratic equation in standard form. Let's look at this guy. Is it in standard form? No. No, it's not. Let's put it in standard form. We want to get everything on this side or zero on that side. You guys have done this before. I'm going to subtract 6X squared from both sides. I'm left with x squared. I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides, minus 4x, and I'm going to add 10 to both sides, plus 3. Now it looks like an equation in standard form. So let's take a second and do step one with our try it problems. What do we have to do to equation one to get it in standard form? Michelle. Take that 9 over. Good job. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. Now it looks like an equation in standard form. Let's look at the second one. What do we have to do to put that equation in standard form? Steve? Nothing. Perfect. Nothing. Sometimes we won't have to do step one. Sometimes it'll be in standard form. Last one looks a little bit messy like our first one. We want to get everything to the left. We want to get our zero to the right. I'm going to do it the exact same way. I'm going to be left with x squared here, minus x, minus 3. Good job with step one. Now, we have all of our equations look like this. I see A's, B's, and C's here, and I see A's, B's, and C's in our quadratic formula. That's not a coincidence. We're going to figure out what our values of A, B, and C are so that we can use our formula. Most important thing to remember when you're finding A, B, and C is that your positive and your negative signs are part of those letters. So until we get used to using the quadratic formula, I'm going to have you guys put circles around your A, B, and C. <coughs> I don't see a number here. What's my A? One. Good. We have an imagined one there. What's my imagined sign in front of that one? Positive. Good. Over here, my signs included. And here, my signs included. I have A, B, and C. We're going to do it for these three. 
Gonna keep my sign with me. What's my A over here? Eric. Positive one. Very good. What's my B? Seven, positive seven. Good, and C? Positive six. Very good. And on the last one, I have a couple of magic numbers there. Uh, Michelle, what's my A, B, and C gonna be? Positive one. Good. Negative one. Excellent. Negative three. Very good. So that's step two. Step three, I bet you guys can guess. We've been working with equations all year. We're gonna plug and chug. Plug and chug. <laughs> plug and chug. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my equation and I'm gonna look at my A, B, and C and I'm gonna put in exactly what I see. X equals minus B. This is why your positives and negatives are important. Our B is a minus four. Minus a minus four is a positive four. Again, my B is four, so minus four squared 16, minus four times one, times three, all over two, times one. Now it looks like something we're used to solving. We've been doing radicals, we've done plus or minus, we can do this. First, what's under my radical? I have four times one times three is 12, 16 minus 12 is four, radical four is two. So all of this equals two. What's it mean when I see this sign? Two equations. Break it into two equations, good job. So I'm gonna break this down into two equations. I have four, I'm gonna make one of them plus, I said everything under here is two, all over two. This one, I'm gonna make minus. When I simplify, I end up with x equals three and x equals one. When we solved a quadratic equations by factoring, we're used to getting two equations. So let's do step three with our sample problems. A, B, C. Um, Jenny, tell me what my equation's gonna look like. Uh, negative 12. Good. Plus or minus the square root of 144. Very nice. Minus four times negative four, times negative nine, all over two, times negative four. Very good. So let's figure out what's under our radical. Four times four times nine, 144. I have three negatives, that means it stays negative. 144 minus 144 is zero. If I don't have anything under my radical, do I need to split into two equations? I see a lot of head shaking, nice job. No, we do not. Sometimes what's under your radical will be zero. You don't need to worry about two equations. I'm left with negative 12 over negative eight. Positive three halves. You don't always have to have two solutions. Sometimes there's one solution. A little bit later in the unit, we're gonna talk about what that looks like graphically. But if you have a zero under your radical, you're gonna have one solution. Let's keep plugging and chugging. Um, Philip, tell me what this equation is gonna look like. Negative uh, hmm. seven. Good. Plus or minus seven squared, 49. Good. Minus four 
times one, times six. Very nice. Over two times one. Very good. Now we have numbers we can work with. We're just gonna simplify. X equals minus seven, plus or minus. What's underneath here? Four times six is 24. 49 minus 24 is 25. What's the square root of 25? Five. Nice, five. So down here we have minus seven, plus or minus five, all over two. We're gonna break that into two. Minus seven plus five, all over two. Minus seven, minus five, all over two. When I simplify, I get minus two over two. That's minus one. When I simplify over here, I get minus 12 over two. That's minus six. Two solutions, just like we're used to, sometimes one solution. It all depends on what's underneath this radical. One more. Uh, Sarah, tell me what this equation is gonna look like. Uh, one, good, plus or minus, one under the square root. Good. Minus four times one times negative three over two times one. Good. Okay, so let's figure out what's under our radical. We have two minuses. That makes this a plus. Three times four is 12. One plus 12, square root of 13. If we make a factor tree, can we simplify that any farther? No. Correct. Square root of 13 as far as we can go. So rewriting that, we're gonna have x equals one plus or minus square root of 13 all over two. When we break that into two, we're gonna use one plus and one minus. One plus square root of 13 over two. One minus square root of 13 over two. You guys can put that in your calculators or I would accept that as your answer. Okay, so that's an introduction to quadratic equations. We're gonna deal with quadratic formula for a few days. Right now I want you guys to break into your blue groups for practice. Um, you, practice folders are located in the practice folder section. As with usual, there is a real world application problem. You must choose one challenge problem from the list. We have questions dealing with all kinds of subjects from uh, football kicks to cannon blasts to water fountains. Um, so you're gonna work in your blue groups. I'll be around to help. And your homework tonight is to reach 90% mastery in IXL U31 that deals with the quadratic formula. And uh, before you leave, don't forget to fill out your exit tickets. Your exit ticket today, I want you to write what you think the most challenging part of using the quadratic formula is. Don't forget to fill those out. Drop them in the box on your way out. While you guys are moving into your blue groups, I'm gonna play some transition music for you.